Lake, the Lake Superior and, and Gorman Lumber Company. They choose all railroad logging and sleigh haul. Now, there, she had 19 camps. My dad built every camp, starting with Camp 1, right here in town. Now, logging out there was all done with horses. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this pine tree down. Now, this is not a real big pine tree. What we're going to do is we're going to cut into this about three inches, and then we're going to chop it, chop it on. It's the notch. It's also the hinges. The direction this tree will fall. The purpose is so when you cut it, it won't split. Now, in some areas, some of the guys they chopped underneath or they cut underneath for the power saw, but we're going to be going from the top down. That's, that's easier. And that's what a lot of guys uh, chop that way. So now we're going to. We did cut into this just a little bit to get the saw in there. This is the five and a half foot cross cut saw, and we're going to give her. Now we're going to chop this nacho. Now each sawyer had a little whiskey bottle with kerosene in it. And cutting this off would had to put under and the sap there because it causes quite a drag. And that's just put under like that there. And sprinkled on and that's it there. Now we're going to Then there was always a wedge put into her. That'll help the direction of the tree. This tree is leaning a little bit, so we don't really have to wedge her. We're going to cut her a little bit more. Pretty much all over the country is when it got started. It was always by a, a major river or a, a lake. Let's get started. They went up these rivers in the, in the summertime, and some of these big rivers, they were able to you know, float the logs right down to the mill, or they were going to load them on a boat, haul them out. In the wintertime, they'd start uh, on about October to pile these logs along these rivers, or lake, on, a, on an incline so that they'd roll down into the river after the ice went out. These were huge piles piled up there with uh, jammers. There was thousands of feet in a pile, and there were sometimes many different loggers uh, working on the same river. Then in the spring when the ice went out they'd uh, get ready to trip that uh, front log that was holding that whole pile there that would run down the river. But before they uh, could do that they'd have to wait till you know, all the ice was gone out and somebody uh, had to go down the stream and to make sure that there, there was no log jams or in the way for these logs to put down. If there was any log jams, well, they'd have to blow them up with dynamite so that that river was uh, open right up. And right after the ice was all gone and there was uh, no danger of any buildup of old trees and stuff, uh, they tripped these huge piles of uh, logs and there'd be thousands and thousands and thousands of logs coming down these rivers. But by 1950, all the virgin timber was just, just about all gone. The logging slowed right down. That was the end of the camps. There was, uh, this was a different type of logging. I'm out here with Mr. Ed Anderson. He's 74 years old and he's still in, uh, in the woods business. He's got two men hired here. And What's your opinion today, Ed, is, uh, from the old days right up to today? Well, I think it was a better deal in the old days. Slasher getting black and in place there, ready to get cutting here. These are the, the John Deere's you see uh, an awful lot of this uh, type of equipment on, uh, on the majority of the logging jobs. Here we got the 740 you now uh, cleaning up in behind the chipper there. All the bark, limbs there from the debarker.